MCAT 2017 Cram, Critical Analysis and Reasoning Skills, Passage 22, Understanding Thomas Hardy. As you view the reading of the passage, you'll notice some highlighted snippets of text. What I want you to do is garner meaning from these specific selections in order to answer the foundations of comprehension, reasoning within the text, and reasoning beyond the text question that follow. All right, the questions are very manageable and so is the reading. So good luck, happy reading, and happy testing. Paragraph one. Writer Thomas Hardy fits neatly into the general scheme of the literature of the second half of the 19th century for he was about midway between writers Matthew Arnold and Walt Whitman. He believed in the efficacy of the knowledge given to one by an understanding of science, but he felt that new points of view should be impregnated with the ancient lore of the past. He believed that old wine should be kept in new bottles. He refused to follow the writers who call themselves realists into the morass of words that they accumulated in their attempts to portray life and character as they thought they were. Likewise, he refused to give himself to pure Impressionism. He endeavored to preserve a balance between objective reality and his interpretation of it. He was in the old sense of the word a literary artist. Paragraph 2. Hardy, of course, read the events of human life in light of his conception of the imminent, imminent meaning of God permanently pervading or sustaining the universe. Imminent will. He believed that the skein, skein meaning a length of thread or yarn loosely coiled and knotted, of circumstance woven blindly and flung forth indifferently, caught up in its web all human beings from the emperor in his palace to the unconscious lout, lout meaning an uncouth or aggressive man or boy, lying drunk in the ditch. But Hardy was not satisfied to hold this view conjecturally. Conjecture, meaning an opinion or conclusion formed on the basis of incomplete information. He scanned the pages of philosophy, of science, and history, and of history to be certain that he read aright. From them, he evolved a view of life, which has been called scientific determinism. Scientific determinism, meaning... Um, since every event in nature has a cause or causes that account for its occurrence and human beings exist in nature, human acts and choices are determined as anything else in the world. Okay? It seemed to him that men moved as automata. Automata meaning moving mechanical devices made in imitation of human beings each within his own sphere, unseen forces played upon them, unseen powers directed them. Paragraph 3. These forces, the physical manifestation of the metaphysical imminent will, were three in number, to which all others were subordinated. They were the power of heredity, the shaping power of education, and the influence of the environment. From them, there was no escape. For every choice seemingly made by the individual, Hardy thought, was dictated by so many thousand unseen circumstances, so interwoven that it was almost impossible to realize the extent to which one was enmeshed. Enmesh meaning cause to become entangled in something. 
and meshed in them. For evidence to substantiate this conclusion, he could point to the past and to the present. The Greeks, for example, believed that the three fates directed every action, no matter how minute, of mortals and immortals, of the peasant plotting in the field and of Zeus waving his machinations. Machinations um, meaning a scheming or a crafty action or artful design intended to accomplish some usually evil end or evil deed on the cloud-kissed brow of Olympus. The Christian era had introduced into the intellectual world the contrary idea of free will, but the world had split on that interpretation of life during the Reformation, when John Calvin gave the world from the dark caverns of his mind the gloomy doctrine of predestination. In the 19th century, the Western world was probably equally divided between the theory of free will maintained by the Roman Catholic Church and a few Protestant denominations and the theory of predestination held by all churches stemming from Calvinism. Unexpectedly, aid from an onslaught source came to those who maintained that human actions were predetermined for the evolutionary theory expounded by Darwin and Huxley and the psychology which grew from it gave weight to the idea that predeterminism fitted better with facts than the theory of free will. Once an anthropomorphic, meaning relating to or characterized by anthro, um, Po anthropomorphism, excuse my like lack of pronunciation skills. That's just it just means having human characteristics. God was out of the picture and his place taken by an evolving consciousness, or whatever the mind of man chose to substitute, it was almost necessary to believe in a theory of life similar to that held by Hardy. And that's it. That wasn't so bad. Based on the philosophical beliefs of Thomas Hardy described in the passage, what can be inferred about the beliefs of writers Matthew Arnold and Walt Whitman? A. One believed in hedonism while the other believed in asceticism. B. One valued ancient tradition, while the other valued modern progress? Or C, one preferred new bottles and the other preferred old wine? I'll give you a moment to think. If need be, definitely refer back to the passage. All right. Okay, so in this Foundations of Comprehension question, you have to understand the central theme and be able to recall and interpret some ex specific examples um, the author uses to support the overall theme, okay? The author writes in paragraph one that Thomas Hardy's beliefs were, quote, about midway between Matthew Arnold and Walt Whitman. However, Arnold and Whitman's beliefs are never directly discussed, so you must estimate their beliefs based on um, how the author describes Hardy's beliefs, okay? In paragraph one, the author also writes that, quote, Hardy believed in the efficacy of knowledge given to one by an understanding of science, but he felt that new points of view should be impregnated with the ancient lore of the past. Thus, 
we can assume that Arnold and Whitman must have ha um, held opposite perspectives about the value of older knowledge versus the value of contemporary knowledge, which is what answer choice um, B is basically saying, okay? But um, let's explore the other things mentioned. Additionally, the phrase, quote, old wine should be kept in new bottles, illustrates that the key contrast is old versus new, but this is a metaphor for Hardy's beliefs and not to be taken literally as um, is done in answer choice C. You, you can find this quote in paragraph one as well. Hedonism refers to the pursuit of pleasure and self-indulgence, while asceticism refers to avoidance of pleasure and self-indulgence. You guys will be practicing asceticism while studying for this MCAT, most definitely, okay? But then you can engage in hedonistic behavior afterwards. If you don't have, you know, any strict religious beliefs, which most of you probably do. All right, so yeah, it's looking like answer choice A is incorrect. These concepts are not directly related to what's discussed in um, paragraph one. The discussion of, um, yeah, so the discussion of old wine versus new wine and all that blah, blah, blah boils down to this. Um, one valued ancient tradition while the other valued modern progress. All right. So that's our answer. A central thesis in the passage is that Hardy, A, was persuaded by science that um, only heredity guided our choices, B, embraced the cross-pollination of scientific, philosophical, and artistic views of human life, C, favored Catholicism over Calvinism because it offered a more complete explanation of the divine, or D, preferred an anthropomorphic God over an evolving consciousness. So what's the answer? I'll give you a moment to think. Okay, so in um, this Foundations of Comprehension question, you just have to be able to understand the central theme, that's what's being asked, and recall and interpret specific parts of the passage, such as the examples used, okay? The author never asserts that any single school of thought, as which is what answer choice A, is um, saying whether it be artistic, scientific, or religious, dominates Hardy's beliefs or outlook on life. Hardy is not described as a purist, but rather as a writer who had a worldview shaped by um, myriads of belief systems. belief systems. So it's looking like things are leaning towards answer choice B. The entire passage discusses how Hardy's scientific determinism was shaped by art, specifically Impressionism and Realism, um, science, specifically evolutionary theory, and religion, okay, specifically Calvinism. So although Hardy is interested in the interplay between heredity, education, and the environment, he did not believe that choices were governed by any single factor. All right. So A is definitely out. Contrary to answer choice C, Hardy was a determinist and Calvinism accepted a form of determinism, whereas Catholicism took the opposing view in favor of free will. An evolving consciousness is presented, um, how is this presented? 
as a more modern and scientific version, um, replacing Calvinism's anthropomorphic God, okay? So although both share um, a determinism generally compatible with Hardy's view, Hardy's said to have, quote, of all the view of life, which had been called scientific determinism and preferred old ideas modernized with science. So this is definitely contrary to Anza Tristi. Any preference would likely favor a scientific version of an evolved consciousness. So yeah, this is definitely wrong. And overall, as um, you might have guessed already, the correct answer choice is B, embrace the cross-pollination of scientific, philosophical, and artistic views of human life. All right? Okay. According to the passage, which two viewpoints held contrary positions regarding the existence of free will? Is it A, Catholicism and Calvinism? B, Calvinism and evolutionary theory, C, evolutionary theory and psychology, or D, ancient Greek philosophy and science. We kind of just discussed this in the previous card, so you should get this really quickly. I'll give you a moment to think. All right. Okay, so I'm sure you guessed the correct answer by now. Um, the opposing positions described in the text are that um, of accepting that free will exists versus some form of determinism in which actions are outside the control of humankind. The text said that Hardy, quote, scanned the pages of philosophy, of science, and that, quote, from them, he evolved a view of life, which he called scientific determinism, okay? This suggests that the view of science was similar, not contrary to the ancient Greeks, who, quote, believed that three fates directed every action. Um, yeah, so these are similar, not contrary. Answer choice D is definitely going to be out. Also, um, evolutionary theory was claimed to aid, aid um, the doctrine of predeterminism, and it is it was espoused by Calvinism. Espoused meaning you know adopted or supported by Calvinism. So yeah, it's Calvinism and evolutionary theory they're not in opposition to each other. Um, that Calvinist view is described as one half of the, quote, split on that interpretation of life during the Reformation, with the contrasting half being, quote, a theory of free will maintained by the Catholic Church. So it's definitely going to be Catholicism versus the dark Calvin, uh, caverns of John Calvin's mind, okay? All right. Which of the following arguments would strengthen the author's claim about the relationship between predestination and evolutionary theory? Is it A, evolutionary theory predicts change over time, not daily decision-making? Is it B, Calvinists believe in God and champion predestination simultaneously? Or is it C, all human decisions are determined by the brain, which is a byproduct of biological evolution? I'll give you a moment to think. Think really hard, okay? <laughs> All right, so in this um, 
reasoning beyond the text question. What you have to do is apply the ideas expressed in the passage to the new situations delineated in the answer choices and even the question stem, okay? So let's first take a look at paragraph three. In paragraph three, the author talks about the divide between the theory of free will and the theory of predestination. The author mentions Calvinism as a religion that advanced the truth of um, predestination in the 19th century. Um, you know, there was growing support for predestination within the religious sphere, but also within the realm of science, specifically within the theory of evolution. To this end, the author writes, quote, evolutionary theory expounded by Darwin and Huxley gave weight to the idea that predeterminism fitted better with the facts than the theory of free will, all right? Um, and also in paragraph three, the author goes on to argue that evolutionary theory gave way to a sort of, quote, evolving consciousness that replaced the traditional, quote, anthropomorphic God, making it, quote, theory of life similar to that held by Hardy. So, okay, now for the answer choices. First, um, the argument that evolutionary theory predicts change over time and not daily decision making weakens the author's claim because that would make the theory irrelevant to the decisions that the notion of free will deals with. And second, the argument that Calvinists believe in both God and predestination would have no effect Why, you might ask, it's because it doesn't involve evolutionary theory, okay? So it's looking like answer choice C is going to be the correct choice by default, but let's see why. This argument gives more specific support to the passage's uh, general claim that evolutionary theory and, quote, the psychology that grew from it support the ideas that human actions are predetermined by natural forces. So yeah, you might say it's the brain, but what about the brain? It's a product of evolution. Okay. All right, so this is the correct answer choice. Which endeavor would best exemplify the sense of impressionism alluded to in paragraph one? Would it be A, a sculpture of a young woman, crying as she clutches uh, the figure of a small baby in her arms? Would it be B, a novel describing the day-to-day -day shopping habits of a middle-class housewife? Sounds like a lot of reality shows that I watch. Um, would it be C, a poem detailing the dangerous and unsanitary working conditions of industrial society? Or um, would it be D, a painting of teenagers suspended in space to portray their social disconnection. So what's it going to be? I'll give you a moment to think and go back to passage one. I mean, paragraph one, not passage one, um, if you need to. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, so again, in this reasoning beyond the text question, you have to apply the ideas expressed in this passage, specifically in paragraph one, um, to the new situations in the answer traces. In paragraph one, the author describes Hardy as a writer who refused to follow the realist who aim to, quote, portray life and character as they thought they were. Likewise, he refused to give himself to pure impressionism. Quote, he endeavored to preserve a balance between objective reality and his interpretation of it. Okay, so based on the last sentence, 
You can infer that the author believes that Impressionists are less concerned with reality and more with their interpretation of reality. And when I say last sentence, I literally mean the last sentence of the passage. Therefore, the correct answer is going to be answer choice C for obvious reasons. It's um, the only artistic endeavor that did not aim to objectively capture life as it actually appears. Rather, it's an interpretation of the emotional experience of being a teenager. All right. Okay. The author's descriptions of, quote, the emperor in his palace and the, quote, unconscious lout dr lying drunk in the ditch are used by the author as support for which claim. Is it A, Hardy believe those who work hard are superior to those who are lazy? Is it B, Hardy believe that socioeconomic divides are inevitable? Is it C, Hardy believe that all walks of life are shaped by uncontrollable events. I'll give you a moment to think. Definitely open up a second window to view the reading of the passage if you're having difficulty answering. All right. Okay, so in this reasoning within the text question, you have to recall or think about the evidence um, the author uses to support a key claim. And here, the key claims, well, the key claim options are presented in the answer choices. So basically, in paragraph two, the author says that Hardy, quote, believed that the scheme scheme meaning like a tangled web or ball of twine or something like that. So the skein of circumstance woven blindly and flung forth indifferently, caught up in its web all human beings from the emperor in his palace to the unconscious lout lying drunk in the ditch. Okay, thus the author's description of the emperor and the drunken lout are meant to convey that one's circumstances are just as determined by chance as another person's, no matter how disparate their station in life. So it's looking like the correct answer choice is answer choice C. This example was not meant to be a commentary on hard work or differences in wealth in class, okay? All right, so that's it. The correct answer is answer choice D. All right, thanks for tuning in. You did a great job.